Hi, uh, this is Don Allen, and today we're going to talk about uh, how to solve the equation f of x equals zero using Newton's method. Newton's method is a uh, rather powerful mathematical technique that's used to solve equations of the form f of x equals zero. It is the method of choice when it works. Now, if the function was linear or quadratic, then it's easy to find the roots because we know formulas for them. Even if it was cubic, we would know how to do it because uh, there's a formula for that that's not well known. But normally we don't look at such functions. They're either transcendental or polynomials of rather high degree. Newton's method is a very powerful method for finding solutions of the equation f of x equals zero and it's uh, basically called a shooting method. And here's how it goes. One guesses some value of the root x sub naught, which we hope is close to the solution. The tangent line to the curve is constructed at that point, f x sub naught, f of x sub naught. And its intersection on the x-axis, x sub 1, is determined. And we'll show this in a moment. This intersection point will normally be closer to the root than the initial guess. This is the hope. It doesn't always work. Uh, we then repeat the process beginning with x sub 1, f of x sub 1, finding the tangent line and the resulting intersection point x sub 2. Continue this process on and on this is called an iteration procedure and we're led to a sequence of points which in many cases will converge to the root we seek. The picture is shown graphically. You see the, the function there is in red and the root uh, where it intersects is the, uh, intersects the x-axis is shown as a blue dot and we start at uh, the value here, uh, x naught, f of x naught. We shoot to the x-axis and get the value x1, which we then use to compute uh, f of x1. And we then shoot to f of x t uh, to x2 and compute the value f of x2. Now you can see I can't really draw a graph of shooting because the shooting seems to hit the root exactly. This is the nature of the Newton's method. It seems to converge very fast when it does converge. It doesn't always converge. As usual, we need to be a little mistrustful of uh, nice looking pictures. In fact, there are some examples where the scheme doesn't work, and we'll, we'll see one later. Uh, we see this uh, uh, and other pathological examples, regardless of uh, some examples where the method does not work, it is quite often the tool of first choice when trying to find the solution of uh, complex equations. Here's the algorithm. As I indicated earlier, we uh, take the value x naught f of x naught and we shoot via the tangent line to the x-axis and so what I've drawn there uh, in this uh, displayed equation is uh, the is the is the uh, uh, equation of the tangent line which we then solve for y equals zero that is the intersection to the x-axis and this gives the value x1, which is equal to x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. So this is just uh, the first semester calculus. Uh, you use a tangent line, and then you find when the tangent line hits the x-axis. The Newton's method is constructed upon this very simple formula, namely in this displayed equation here we see that the iterates are uh, 
given by x sub n equals x sub n minus 1 minus the derivative of x sub n minus 1 over uh, minus the function of x sub n divided by the derivative of x sub n minus 1. And we continue to do this until the function is close to 0. Well, until the iterates are very close to each other is actually our, going to be our criteria. So if we write this capital function f of x equal x minus f of x over x sub n minus 1, we generate an iterative method as we've uh, considered earlier in the course that x sub n is f sub x sub n minus 1 beginning <coughs> with x and 0. We do need a starting value. This particular method doesn't start from anything, from nothing. You have to have something to start with and this is a, uh, a criteria for all iterative methods. They have to start somewhere. In this example we're going to use Newton's method to compute uh, an approximation to the square root of 2. So we need a function that has that solution. x squared minus 2 equals 0 has a root x equals square root 2. And then uh, we compute the iterates. Uh, we define uh, capital F of x is x minus f of x over f prime of x as above. And then, uh, since we can compute everything, we uh, obtain that x, uh, that is equal to x squared plus 2 divided by 2x. And then we compute all the iterates as per above. And in the table below, we show those iterates starting with x uh, uh, not equal 2. And by the third iterate, we're extremely close to the actual root 1.414216. And that is within uh, 10 to the minus 6 of the actual root. So in just three iterates, we're sitting really on top of the root. Now, when do we stop iterating? Well, there's no hard and fast rule. Uh, it's easy to see that if a is a point for which f of uh, a equals a, uh, then uh, this is a point for which f of a equals zero, as uh, we've discussed via iterative methods. This is one way to have the, a value x sub n close to the root, is to compute the, diff the difference uh, between successive values, and if this is small, uh, then we use that, uh, the x sub n plus first iterate, as the uh, iterate, as the uh, approximation to zero. With the Newton's method, we can find the rate of convergence. And in fact, for the Newton's method, when it converges, the uh, the convergence rate is quadratic and what this means is uh, as you can see in the definition there that the difference between the actual root the solution and x sub n plus 1 is equal to or less than some constant which is fixed it's bounded it can be a thousand a million what have you times the difference between uh, a, the root and the previous iterate squared. Now in the ongoing discussion I'm going to eliminate discussing absolute values. I just hope that you can put them in uh, mentally as I go along. Just so. In any event, uh, when we know that a uh, minus x sub n is quite small or certainly less than 1 and m times it is less than 1, the convergence rate appears to be very, very rapid. In fact, if a minus x sub n is on the order of one-tenth, then a minus x sub n plus 1 is on the order of one-hundredth, and the next difference is on the order of 1 over 10,000, the square of that. We will show that for sufficiently nice functions, and nice is always a key point in dealing with uh, problems of numerical analysis, 
The rate of convergence of the approximations to the root of f by Newton's method is quadratic. Okay, this is almost the highest order of convergence you can obtain by numerical methods. Very few methods are higher, and, and such methods are generally restricted to very particular types of functions. So let's go on to consider what sufficiently nice actually means. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is look at the difference between a and the n plus first iterate x sub n plus 1. And uh, we set that up and we write a minus uh, the defining term for the iterate. And then we do some algebra. And then we factor the a minus x sub n out. As you can see, that's algebra so far. And then we apply uh, the mean value theorem uh, for the numerator, which states that the difference of x sub n uh, minus f of a is f prime of c over um, f prime of x sub n. And so that gets uh, a complete factor of a minus x n outside. And now we look at uh, the uh, quotient f prime of cn over f prime of xn. And we write uh, that as follows. As you can see, I hope, uh, by, by uh, cross multiplying. And then we have this difference of two derivatives in the numerator and then apply the mean value theorem again to wind up with the second derivative at some point c divided by f prime of x sub n times the factor x sub n minus c. And uh, since uh, uh, c lies between x n and uh, uh, c n, we obtain finally uh, this inequality that the difference between the original n plus Hurst iterate from the root is given by the square of the uh, difference between um, the, the root and the nth iterate multiplied by this factor here. So that's the key. That factor is important. And what it tells you is, is that we need that factor constraint. So we need the bound on the second derivative. That will bound the numerator. But on the first derivative, you see it has to be bounded away from 0. It can't get close to 0. So in the case f prime of the root, f prime of a is 0. That means we have a double root. This method may fail completely. Uh, and actually, there are methods to deal with that. Uh, but we'll save that for another day. The last inequality tells us what we mean by sufficiently nice. Namely, we'll assume the second derivative is bounded, and also the first derivative is bounded away from 0. All right. Now, what we're going to do in this example is uh, use Newton's method to find the square root of any number c and show that it converges quadratically. And I uh, just encourage you to read uh, the uh, text here. Uh, we look at the function square, uh, x squared minus c for some positive constant. And of course, the solution, the root is square root c. Then we compute the derivative and the second derivative. And we plug all of that into the formulation that we have. And you can see that uh, x sub n plus 1 minus square root c is positive. But in fact, what we have here is that the difference of the n plus first iterate uh, to the root is dominated by the square root of c uh, minus the nth iterate squared. And that is the quadraticness that we're looking for. Thus, if our iterates 
start out larger than the square root of c, they'll remain larger than the square root of c. This means that f prime evalu evaluated at any x sub n will always be greater than the square root of c times 2. And this means that the convergence of the iterates is quadratic. In fact, we have the, the final formula right here. Uh, which you can see shows that the n plus first iterate minus the root is equal to or less than 1 over the root times the square of the previous iterate minus the radical c. Thus the method is quadratically convergent. Making these estimates for other functions, uh, and this is a quite a simple function, can be difficult. All right, now in this example, which I'll cover only briefly, we try and estimate the uh, uh, root uh, at the nth step. And it just am uh, amounts to using uh, this formula uh, recursively to obtain that the difference between the n plus first root and the square root of c, namely the solution, is dominated by the uh, absolute value of the initial point minus the square root of c, all raised to this power here. This is a big old power. This power is 2 raised to the n plus 1. So that's a big power. So in fact, if we pick uh, on the finding the square root of c, we pick x naught equal 2 then we know that 2 minus the square root of c is less than 6 tenths. And thus, say for the fourth iterate, x sub 4 minus the square root of 2 will be less than 6 over 10 to the 16th, which is about 10 to 2 times 10 to the minus 4th. Now, as it happens, Newton's method does not always work. And let me give you a real simple example here. Uh, this function is shown. We start at x naught and we go to x naught f of x naught and shoot to the x axis to get x one and then we start at x one f of x one and we shoot to the x axis <coughs> and x two is exactly the same as x naught. So that means we would shoot again to get x sub three shoot again to get x sub 4. And so we'll go round and round <coughs> on this <coughs> parallelogram, never converging at all. In fact, <coughs> if the value x naught started larger, then we would actually have values that diverge. <coughs> so divergence can take two forms. That is, the values oscillate around and never go anywhere, or they can actually diverge to infinity. This depends on the function, and importantly, depends on the starting value. In this particular function, you can see we have both a first derivative and a second derivative, and they're quite well behaved, but the starting value is bad. So keep this in mind. Newton's method is great when it works, but terrible when it doesn't.